Our story happened during World War II, when there were groups of people who organized a resistance force to combat the Nazi army Marchemum. They were known as the Partisans. The Partisans were groups of Russian, Polish, and Jewish people who had escaped war camps and had joined a group to fight a common cause. There was one group of partisans that consisted of some former Polish officers and a few Jews. It happened once that on one of their missions, they discovered an old starving rabbi on the side of the road. Please help me! Who are you? M my name is David, but who are you? We are members of a partisan group. We are fighting the Nazis. Please, please, <coughs> take me with you. One of the non-Jewish partisans took mercy on the rabbi and nursed him back to health. The rabbi was of no real military use to the partisans, but he was given the job of cooking, and he also davened for the safety of the group. Surprisingly, this group of partisans suffered no casualties for the rest of the war. When the war was over, the group broke up. Some went back to Poland, others traveled to Latvia, and others became wandering people with no place to go. The Russian government began to clamp down on the people, taking away their freedom. The group decided it was too much, and it was time to escape. We must leave. The Russians will no longer allow us to live free. The situation is getting really bad, and we must escape. But how? There are Russian guards all over. I have a plan. A friend of mine told me that we must cross the river in the winter, when the river is frozen. When we reach the other side of the river, we will be entering no man's land. There we will find a hut. This hut is used by the Russian soldier who is in charge of protecting the border and preventing border crossings by all unauthorized people. This man is armed and his job is to shoot anything that moves. However, at one o'clock in the morning he leaves his hut and walks a few miles to the next hut where he meets another soldier. There the soldiers exchange reports and supplies. Then he returns to his hut. The whole trip takes approximately two hours. During that time, we can warm ourselves in his hut. But we must be out of there by the time that he returns. That sounds good, but we can't take any of the older people with us. That's right. I spoke to all of them. Everyone will stay except that old rabbi. He insists on coming with us. We must make a decision. Do we take him or not? Uh, let's leave him. After all, he can find food in one of the towns. We don't need to be slowed down by a frail old man. We have done enough for him already. No, man. I refuse to leave without him. If we leave without him, we're all doomed. Reluctantly, they agreed, and they included the rabbi. It was a cold and miserable night. A blizzard broke out. And sure enough, Stefan was correct. The old rabbi could not keep up with the rigorous climbing and running. The blizzard got worse. And more than once, they all had to stop and carry the old rabbi. He wasn't very heavy. But it was a big burden, and it slowed down the entire group. Several times they argued, and discussed whether they should leave the rabbi behind. It was one o'clock in the morning when they arrived at the hut, which by now was half buried in snow. They could smell the fire and feel the warmth coming from the hut. They waited and waited behind some bushes, waiting for the soldier to leave. It seemed like forever. Soon enough, the soldier left, and almost frozen to death, the group ran into the hut, each one trying to get his icy hands and frostbitten feet 
closer to the fire. Hey, let me put my smelly feet next to the fire. I can't even feel my toes. No way, man. Get your feet out of here. They stink. Put your shoes back on, will ya? Okay, okay. While the others were arguing next to the fire, the old rabbi moved away from the group. He opened a small bag and took out an old and rusty menorah. Then he took a small piece of string, rolled it into a wick, and proceeded to fill the menorah with some oil from a small tin bottle that miraculously he had brought along with him. Everyone was in shock. Not a word was uttered. A sound could not be heard in the room. Spellbound, they watched the rabbi. Slowly, the rabbi picked up the menorah, placed it by the window of the hut, and in a low voice, he recited the brachos for the lighting of the menorah. He carefully lit the wick and began to sing Haneros Halalu. Suddenly, like an erupting volcano, Put out that light! You will bring the Russian soldiers back here! We will all be caught! The rabbi calmly tried to explain that it was the first night of Hanukkah and that he had kindled the light in order to keep this special mitzvah of remembering the miracle of Hanukkah. No, no! I cannot put out the flame! It must burn for half an hour! This is according to the Torah law! Suddenly, the door of the hut flew open. Everyone turned towards the door and saw a giant Russian soldier standing before them. They all froze. Nobody moved. They could only stare. Freeze! Put your hands up in the air! Who are you? Tonight is Hanukkah! Is, is that Hanukkah Menorah? I can't believe it! Could it really be? I haven't seen a Hanukkah Menorah in ten years! He walked over and kissed the rabbi and broke out into tears. I'm, I'm a Jew! I, I got taken into the army! Uh, do you have any more oil? I also want to light the menorah. Well, uh, actually, I have a little bit left right here. The soldier lit his own Hanukkah flame, and they all sang together. After, after I left my hut, I realized, I, I realized, I remembered that I left some reports back in my closet. When I was returning, I saw the light coming from the hut. I couldn't believe my eyes. There it was, a menorah. I couldn't believe it, right in my own hut. Rabbi, you are safe here. The soldier took a large bottle of vodka out from his coat and gave each one a drink. L'chaim, happy Hanukkah. You know, it's, it's very lucky that I was on guard today. Some other guard would have killed all of you. Come, I will show you how to cross the border. The group followed the soldier, and he brought them safely across the border. Before he parted from the group, the soldier turned to the rabbi. Rabbi, where are you going now? Oy, I'm on my way to Eretz Yisrael. Rabbi, when you get to Eretz Yisrael, please, daven for me. I should be able to leave the army and come safely with my family. Amen, amen. Eventually, the rabbi made it to Eretz Yisroel, and every Hanukkah, he would tell his grandchildren how the Hanukkah Lichtalach saved his life.